this video will show you how to get drop keyboards to work with Signal RGB. Make sure you pay attention to everything in this video because this process can brick your device if you do it wrong. Signal RGB is not responsible if you brick your device. If you are using VIA or Vile and you have existing mappings, then you should go back them up before flashing your device. You'll be able to restore all of your mappings after you flash your device. Connect the keyboard to your PC and make sure you have closed both Signal RGB and VIA. Now download QMK Toolbox. A link to this page will be provided in the video description. Right click on QMK Toolbox and run it as administrator. You should be prompted to install drivers. If you forgot to run QMK Toolbox as administrator, then you won't be able to install the drivers, so you'll need to restart as administrator. If you don't get prompted to install drivers, you can install them by going to Tools at the top of the window or press Ctrl plus N on your keyboard. In the video description, I've provided the link to a GitHub full of custom firmware files. You need to find and download the one that applies to your drop device. Now this next part is absolutely critical, so pay really close attention. Jingle jingle, pay attention. If you have a drop alt, drop Karina, drop shift, or drop control, then check to see if it says mass drop on it. Because if it does, then it's a V1 keyboard. If it only says drop, then it's a V2. Now with that in mind, let's go back to the GitHub page. If you have any of the V1 keyboards I listed out, then go to the folder labeled QMK plus weirdness outdated firmware, and then click mass drop XAP. Now download the correct firmware file in the folder labeled VIA. In my case, it's the drop control V1, so I'll download this firmware file. If you have a V2 drop keyboard or any others, then go to the folder labeled QMK plus VIA firmware, and then click the 0.24.9 folder. This version number could have been updated after this video was uploaded, so keep that in mind. Now select the folder based on your brand, in this case it's D for drop, so click 0 through J. Now you can scroll until you find the firmware files associated with the name of your keyboard, and then download the file that matches your keyboard model. For example, if you have a V2 drop control, then you would download the file labeled drop control V2. Okay, so now you've got the correct firmware file. The final thing you need to figure out is how to put your keyboard into bootloader mode, since it varies based on the model. I'll leave a link in the video description for a document that has instructions on a per keyboard basis. With QMK Toolbox open, perform the instructions to enter bootloader mode. For my drop control V1, it says to hold FN plus B for 3 seconds while plugging it in. And then you should see a yellow text that says DFU device connected. Now click open in QMK Toolbox and select the firmware you downloaded. Then click the flash button and wait for the process to finish. You'll know it's done when it says flash complete in yellow text. You should be able to open Signal RGB and see that your keyboard is now detected. At this point, you can go back and import your saved mappings into VIA if applicable. You should also be aware that VIA and Signal RGB cannot be running at the same time. If you want to configure your mappings in VIA, then first close Signal RGB and vice versa. If you still need additional help, then join the Signal RGB plugin Discord server, which I'll link in the video description. This is the end of the tutorial, and I hope it helps.